When I grow up, I want to be a veterinarian because I love animals and I like taking care of them. One of my friends said he wanted to be a professional fisherman with me, have my own boat that I can drive all over, have my own gear and stuff, and uh, catching big fish, you know. Which friend said he wanted to be a professional with you? Steve. Steve. What else you said you wanted to be when you grow up? I just wanted to be a dentist. You said you also wanted to be? A dentist. No, she oh, said she wanted to be a, not a fisherman, but a what? What you call it? Come on, Morgan. Wait, what? What is what? it called? I don't know what you're talking about. Shh, you do. That's oh, why you make that face. No, <laughs> yes, I don't you know. Do. I don't know. All I wanted to be is a veterinarian. What was it called, Mark? I can't be no fisherman. Fisherman? I want to be a fisherwoman. <laughs> yeah, fisherwoman. Yeah, you too much Just the feeling of the fish biting and stuff, pulling down. And then when you lose one, just lose one. Washington's house down here on the Potomac River. How cool is that? Yeah. That's pretty neat, huh? Kind of like his backyard right here. Who knows who George Washington is? Who is it, Mo? First president. First president of what? United States. At the United States, that's right. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we right here. Look, bald eagle. Color. So who knows what the bald eagle is? What? The United States oh, bird. United States. Yeah, it's the United States bird. So you know, every state has their own state bird, but then the country also has a bird too, and it's the bald eagle. And I bet you we can find another one. I seen one eating a fish on the bank in practice. He let us get real close to him. It's that thing like you see that in the water right there? Yeah. What do Daddy like to hunt for? Grass. Crabs? I said grass. No, I said hunt, hunt for, for hunt, hunt for grass. For grass. <laughs> what, is that? what kind of animal? Oh, uh, I thought like you were talking about fishing. Dove, uh, ducks. Duck. Duck. Yeah. It's a duck line. That's where the hunters sit at during duck season, wait for the ducks to come in. There's they got another, another one. one. There's another one. <laughs> I know we see another one. The sixth and final stop of the Walmart FLW tour takes us to the Potomac River at the end of June. And the cool thing about the Potomac is it's a very historic fishery. You got guys fishing basically, you know, right in the center of Washington, D.C. You got the Jefferson Monument in the background. And on the flip side, guys can run down to the Chesapeake Bay, basically kind of middle of nowhere. Big ships running around, uh, barges, recreation and traffic. It's just a very busy urban place that holds a ton of bass, which is one reason most of the field is excited about going to the Potomac. The other thing guys kind of like, it's a tidal fishery, so it's not like, you know, a normal lake where, you know, everything is what it is. The, the fishery constantly changes throughout the day, and you get high tides, low tides, and that adds a big curveball and makes it a pretty cool tournament uh, to follow along with. This yeah. was the first tour event with Mark. The kids was out for the summer, so we decided to ride along with them. Coming into the last event of the season, Mark sits in 15th place in the Angler of the Year standings, which means he's well on his way to qualify to go to the Forestwood Cup on Lake Wachita. We got our fingers crossed that he makes the Forestwood Cup. <laughs> as long as he can keep the wheels on the wagon through this tournament, which shouldn't be a problem, I mean, that's where he's going. His ticket's punched. And the reason he's going to be going is because not only has he had a strong finish on the Potomac before in an FLW Series event, but he also grew up on the Cal Delta, which has a lot of similarities to the Potomac in that it's a tidal fishery and it has a lot of grass. So he knows you know, this area and how to adapt to situations. And really it should be kind of a walk in the park for him. So yeah, man, just finished up practice and uh, 
man, I just don't know. This has been the toughest practice for me all year long. I mean, uh, you know, I came to Potomac last year. You know, you, I, would, I would get 15 or 20 bites in a day. And I'm having days in practice where it's three or four bites a day. And so it leaves me really scratching my head and uncertain as to what I'm going to do come game day. But uh, this whole season has been a grind. Every single stop we've been to, with the exception of Toho, of course, where I ended up finishing in ninth. Uh, every venue we've been to since then has just been tough fishing, man. This has been no different, man. Uh, you know, it's fishing. Anything can happen. I'm going to give it all I got and, and leave it all on the water. So um, we'll see. I got him. I got him. I got him. Woo! Number one. Two's a dandy. Take a cup more like that. Tearing it up, but there's a few fish in here, man. I know it. Come in here. Mark, be careful. So look, I got one on the clip. Grab that, grab that clip, put the fish in the bag, and then take him off the clip. So just grab that white ball, put it in the bag, 
There you go. Now you gotta take them off the clip. It's just like a safety, like a safety. Look. Reach down in there, undo the clip. See, you gotta open the clip just like a, like a safety pin. All right, now just dump him off the clip. Just flip the clip upside down. There you go. Awesome. You gotta grab him firm. You can't, Daddy can't afford for these to put him in the bag. In the bag. In the bag. There you go. <laughs> You want me to get him? He had enough. Took took a little shower. Second shower of the day. Yep. That's all good. Fishermen get wet. That's what we do. Thank you, sir. He's gonna take me out of the water. Come here, son. Step right there. Say where? Right in front of the trolling motor. Give me both hands. You ready? Yep. <laughs> you to get your hands rough, man, so you can grab them bass like that. Oh, that's the one way. you want me to take and throw in the river down No, here? that ain't. That's the other one. Oh. Yeah, that's that one over there. <laughs> After win, but this is my son, Mark. This is Mark the third. It's oh, Mr. Mark Mr. Bill the third Taylor. Bill. <laughs> dad right there, I'll tell you. Thank you. This guy right here is the man. Oh, and he can he can also <laughs> he can also get you in a lot of trouble if you don't if you don't do right. That's right. <laughs> or get you out of it. Or yeah, either way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a slippery one there, ain't it? They don't want to go. Yeah. Mark Daniels Jr., come on up. Who's that by the way? Oh, I got my I got here, let him introduce himself. Yes, sir. Uh Mark Daniels. The third. Yeah, the third. I like you, man. Where are you at in the points race for the cup? I'm sitting in 15th, man, so I need to I need to catch him. I think you're going to be okay, man. A five bass limit for Mark Daniels Jr. Limit of bass worth 12 pounds, four ounces, has you in 19th place. There you go. Great job. Thanks, Chris. Good job, Mark. After day one, Mark really did a lot better than the standings reflect. He's in 35th place. But really, the weights are so stacked, they're so tight that, I mean, one big bite and you can climb the leaderboard in a heartbeat. So at this point, I mean, it's not really looking at, oh, am I going to get a check? You know, for Mark, it's kind of more, uh, am I going to make that top 20 cut to fish on day three? What's, what's leading our 16? Yeah, yeah. So what do you need to make the cut? You just yeah. need to catch 10, 12 pounds. Yeah, I don't even really know what I need, per se, to make the cut. But I think you're right. I just, I want to, I want to be in that top, I'm trying to make. Top 20, huh? Yeah, bad, oh. man. I, I want it to bad, man. I, I know what I it's taste that take. little bit of blood. I know what it's going to take. I need 15. No, no, no. Top 20? Yeah. You're going to need 13, 6 tomorrow. 13, 6, oh, okay, so. 25, 10. 25, 10 is fishing tomorrow. Yeah, that's going to be strong. 12 and a half, that's, not, yeah. Just shy of 12 and a half. No, that's over. Yeah. Over 12 and a half. I don't think you need 13. Wow, man. Maybe a little more. Let's just a lot of guys are catching them. Huh? So let's take the 80 boats that were fishing the five or six community holes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most of those guys are probably there. Do you think the fishing's going to be better for them? No, it's going to be tougher. It's going to have to be tougher. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I yeah. think 13 some. You catch 13 and a half tomorrow. Yeah. You, you got you, a chance to be in that. You tough definitely tomorrow. got a chance. Yeah. So, so how do you feel? I mean, I feel good. You know what? It's crazy. I had a limit quick this morning, real quick. Surprised me big time. And I was like, all right, you know. Then I went on like a four-hour lull. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is, but it's about like practice. Yeah, we had that slack tide, too. That was part of it. Yeah, that slack tide is always bad. That, that's bad at home, too. <laughs> that slack tide's no good. Slack no, time. they I don't like I eat it. my sandwich during slack tide. Yeah, that that's a good happen. time to take lunch, man. Oh, no. I drank, I, was, I drank a couple of waters as I was running down Did the lake. Did you cramp up today? No, I didn't. I cramped up. I eat a lot of bananas so, though too, man. Yeah. That helps with that, yeah. I eat a lot of bananas, man. Good Not on my boat though. <laughs> Before you get on the water. Y'all remember that. No bananas on the boat. Not on, not on the rattle trap boat. Anyways, I see some guys with them, but don't bring them bananas on the rattle trap boat. We'll be fighting. <laughs> you don't do bananas on boat either? No. Yeah, no. Well, I, I do, but practice. In practice, not, yeah. Not, 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 on tour, heck, no. not on game day. Not on game day. I don't truly believe it. What? <laughs> hey, right, I, huh? I mean, I ain't big on that kind of stuff, but. You're a college educated man. I know it, dude. <laughs> hey. It's something. Yeah, that's superstition. I was at Lake Shasta. 
Jimmy, I love this. Fishing a rail vac. Me and my dad practiced for three days prior. I'm talking about Shasta's a lake where you can catch 50 of them in a day. Problem is catching one over two pounds or right at two pounds or whatever. Dragging grubs. I mean, it's just smoking them. Tournament day shows up. I'm like, all right, we're chasing here. We're going to go over here and smoke us up some pound and a half, pound and a quarter spots. I get in here and fish for three and a half hours, not a single bite, dude. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. One o'clock rolls around. I got zero fish on Shasta, which is kind of hard to do because there's a lot of fish to be caught. Uh, and I'm like, what the hell? My co is having a tough time too. He don't got nothing. So he decides to sit down and eat lunch. This dude whipped out the biggest, yellowest banana <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. It, it, it had to have been this long. Come on. I'm telling you, it was like a banana on steroids. <laughs> it was huge, super bright yellow. He swings that thing out that bag and I'm like, that's a effing banana. And I'm like, no wonder no why I didn't catch it. Yeah, dude. No wonder it catch but it was so late in the day, and I was so already mentally gone, I didn't even say nothing to him. I just let him enjoy that banana. And I was just like, oh my God. Ever since then, you that's it. You inventory before people get in your boat now? Pat them down. Right. You, bet not be high. you bet not have one in your sock, in your backpack, your fanny pack. Mm -mm, we ain't doing it. No banana bread, nothing, none of that. No banana cookies, you can't no. Wear banana shorts? No. But banana bikinis, none of that. Plantains okay? Plantains. <laughs> I don't know about that one. We ain't tried that uh, one yet. Yeah. We'll find out. We, yeah, I, I ain't gonna find out. Cause as soon as I see it, it's going out the boat. What's up, youngster? What's up? Where'd you catch him on? Hey, How baby. did you catch him? Oh man. I caught him on a white snag proof frog. Where did you go? I'm Caught a couple punches some green. You know I had to go punch that grass one time. Oh man. When you get on that frog, boy, you better have a good heart. Cause the way they come up and get it, you got you a pacemaker in there. You might skip a pace. Can you go get some paper? Some paper. Down there. For what, baby? So you can draw? She has to draw her now. Yeah, she has to draw it. Yeah, you do. You have a Morgan, Morgan, that would have been in first place if you drew a map. But, you know. I did. No, you didn't. Where is it? I'm in 33rd. Right on that table, then. <laughs> what is that? But what happened? You're small, it's, but it's the whole thing. What's that, the launch ramp? No. <laughs> 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 the paper wasn't big enough for <laughs> Put up a Tommy River. It would have been bigger she, she unless the... you went and buy some paper. One more. <laughs> <laughs> You just drew the launch ramp, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
and do it for an additional 10 minutes. Sucked it. I yeah, I can't do that much more. It's my dog, Morgan, Bill. Oh, say, say. Bill, you're a beautiful young lady. <laughs> you got a very, very good day. <laughs> you love him, don't He's our superstar, Mark Daniels Jr. out of Tuskegee, Alabama. Yes, sir. 12 pounds, 4 ounces yesterday. We got our team up here again today, though, don't we? I got the crew, man. This, uh, this is a cool special tournament. I got my family traveling with me on this when the kids are out of school, so they're up here in... Uh, the Maryland, Virginia area, really enjoying, enjoying the weather and the scenery. Gonna do a little sightseeing afterwards and uh, hang out and have a good time, man. Uh, I like fishing the Potomac River. I was here last year, man. This place is, uh, for whatever reason, for me, has just been throwing curveballs since I got here earlier this week, man. And uh, I've been trying to catch them best I could. I managed to catch five, man. And um, that was all we could do today. Didn't get any good bites. Five is where we always want to get to, though. That's the yes, point. 12-4 yesterday. Mark Daniels Jr.'s got five today that go eight pounds, six ounces. Got you at 20 pounds, 10 ounces for the tournament, sir. Uh, day two, 90th place for Mark. And, you know, that top 20, definitely out of the question. But more importantly, uh, his chance at going to the Forestwood Cup, that, that ticket might be a little in jeopardy. And that's kind of a scary thought. Like, what was the biggest fish you caught over here? Two pounds, maybe. It's a bad deal that Mark had the worst finish of his 2015 season in this event. You know, he's going home empty-handed, uh, no check. God, I just wish I would have caught him. Just needed a couple good bites. Nothing even ridiculous, you know, just a couple good ones.
But before we get too far down the road, let's change gears for a second because I don't want to overlook what Jimmy Reese said uh, to Mark on day one about the whole top 20 cut. Top 20? Yeah. You're going to need 13.6 tomorrow. 13, 6, oh, okay, so. 25, 10. 25, 10 is fishing tomorrow. This is incredible. The dude predicted the top 20 cut down to a T, 25 pounds, 10 ounces. Now, I don't know if it's some kind of like weird West Coast voodoo, weird juju crystal ball thing you got, Jimmy Reese, but that's dang good, man. That's dang good. Props to you. What's up, Scott? You doing all right? No, I'm hanging in there, man, but so. Yeah, you must have got you a bag. No, man, I struggled, man. Huh? I struggled. I got five babies. I say, at least I get to say that. Ha! Ha ha ha! 90th place. Two good bites, decent bites, not even good. Two decent bites, caught one, lost one. Oh, man. I don't want to say the wheels fell off. 90th. 90th place. Boom. No but they're very loose. Ah, the wheels. MDJ. And everywhere. So many wheels everywhere. Mark, come on, Mark. Oh, no, okay, so you know what that is? That's, that's really cool. That's the exoskeleton of a... Uh, grasshopper? No, it's not a grasshopper. Spire. Maybe like a mayfly or something. It's dead? It's dead. So it hatched out of here into something else. Till it's adult stage. It's the outside skin. So it's like the exoskeleton, you know? Congrats to Clark Winlet for going on to win the final stop of the year. A great way to end his season. This is where the field for the Forcewood Cup is set. The top 35 guys go, and before this tournament, Mark was 15th place in the Angler of the Year standings. And after his little bit of a stumble down the steps, uh, he settled in 26th place. So Mark, you're gonna wanna load up on art supplies so you can have Morgan draw you a very detailed map of Lake Wachita, because you, my friend, are going to the Forest Wood Cup. <laughs>